You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Thursday, the 20th of October, 2016. The market was up today 0.28%, still in a long-term downtrend on our weekly and two-day charts. Neither one of those trend lines, the bigger chart trend lines, has been violated at this point. As we look at the MACD on the total market, we see that it is running parallel, maybe a little up, moving toward the signal line. Derivative oscillator is still a big derivative oscillator, but it has reduced in its size from the past two-day oscillator that ended on the 17th. The one that ended on Wednesday the 19th has reduced in size, so the down push is better. However, the market, when we look at the candle that we have, we have a spinning top and it's an open box spinning top. It's got movement both on the bottom and on the top as far as the wicks go means we had up and down movement, not simply up movement on the candle. And again, just up 0.28%, so just a little over a quarter of a percent. We don't have a crossover on the MACD. We don't have a crossover on the derivative oscillator. We don't have a penetration of the two-day trend line. We're still well below the weekly chart. Let's take a look at the four-hour chart. What do we see? Well, we have four four-hour candles, four half-hour candles. What do we? What does that mean? Well, that's two days of up movement, actually crossed over moving up back on the 18th. Now, if the, and it ended actually at the end of the day, right up as far as the four-hour chart goes, right up on the two-day trend line. Let's see if the movement continues. It looks like it will as far as the two, the four-hour chart goes with the MACD continuing to move up and the derivative oscillator accelerating. But again, remember, this is the shortest of all of our charts, and it did stop. And maybe this is a barrier. We shall see as the markets open and move through the day on Thursday whether the two-day trend line is going to be a ceiling for this latest movement. If you do see the markets roll back over, crossover going down, again, remember our big charts are still in down territory. That is on the total market. Let's see how much the S&P 500, which usually looks a fair bit like the total market, what does it look like? Somewhat similar. We see the MACD moving up. Derivative oscillators lost some of its downward energy. Both the weekly chart still going down and the two-day chart and the market closed below both of those. The total market, I'm sorry, the S&P 500 was up 02 7% compared to the total market being up 0.28%. Let's look at the four-hour chart, see what we see. We still have four candles with upward movement. Again, that crossover occurred in the afternoon on Tuesday the 18th, and the movement stopped below the two-day trend line, so we don't have a penetration on the S&P 500 either, but we do have strong up movement on this four-hour chart. We'll continue to monitor that. Again, if we see a crossover going back down, paralleling the down moves in the two-day and the weekly chart, then that would be a jumping in point for an inverse trade. If you don't know what an inverse trade is, that is actually investing in a fund, a short fund, that moves in the opposite direction of one of these indexes or gold, depending on the chart that you're actually looking at. Here with the S&P 500, it would be something like SH, which is the power, the ProShares inverse fund of the S&P 500. It's a short fund. You want to know more about how, to, how short funds work, how inverse funds work, you need to go listen to our podcast, our video training that we have on inverse markets, how to make money when markets burn or crash. So please listen to that and watch it. You will get a great deal from it. Now we're going to go back to our two-day chart. We're going to take a look at the Qs. It was actually down 0.01%, so one-tenth of 1%. We have our weekly chart has continued to go up in the queues over the last many weeks. However, our two-day chart is a little bit schizophrenic. It's been going down during a long time period, all the way since the 26th of August. But as we say, all things being equal, the market tends to move in the direction of the largest chart, which is the weekly chart, which means predominantly, even though there have been some down moves over the course of 
of these many weeks. The, and, and you could trade those. The market tends, though, and has tended to move in the direction of the big chart, which is the weekly chart. That's what we have seen over and over. There'll be some down moves. Then there'll be more up moves than down. That's why we track the weekly as well as the two-day chart. It's important to do that. Okay, that's what we're still looking at here. Now, what has happened over the last day? Market back down again on Wednesday. We, however, have, because of the up movement on Tuesday and we're looking at a two-day candle, we have an open green box with the wick on top, meaning stronger up movement on the cues, even with a little bit of a peel back, a tiny, tiny peel back, 0.01% for the day on Wednesday. Derivative oscillator still gaining in negative energy in the MACD is moving down not as much as it had been the 7th through the 15th. It has kinked up a little bit more, so it's losing some of that downward momentum when the last two days of up movement. If we look intraday, what do we see? Looks like the Qs could have topped off somewhere back on the 18th, and it's really been sliding sideways since then throughout the course of the afternoon on the 18th and all day on the 19th. So again, we're hesitant to trade anything on the Qs until the long chart, the weekly chart, and the two-day chart reconcile themselves. It makes it hard to make a good, clean call. That is where we are as far as our three indexes go. Now we're going to go to gold. What is gold doing? Gold up over half a percent today, 0.57%. Gold still in a long-term downtrend on the daily, on the two-day rather, and the weekly charts. And it is losing some of its downward momentum on the two-day chart as far as the derivative oscillator and the MACD. The MACD is actually moving up at this point in time at the end of the day on the 19th. Now, if we look, we still have a crossover, though, so we're still confirmed down moves on the weekly and the two-day. What's happening on this four-hour chart? We've told you it's prescient. If you would have jumped in when it crossed over going up back on the afternoon of the 12th of October. The high was 119.91. If you had jumped in in the worst possible position that afternoon, how high has it gotten since then? Well, it actually hit over the course of the morning on Wednesday, a high of 121.46. And in the afternoon, the high 121.25. So, um, yeah, 121.25. So, again, nice return in just that short period of time thanks to this prescient four-hour chart, which continues to work. Now, remember, those who've been listening long-term, you know that the four-hour chart stopped working at the end of last year and didn't start working again until sometime in like July, January or February. So, it's working now. How long do we use a chart that works until it doesn't work? <laughs> so it's working right now. The only concern is we do have long-term downtrends on the double long, that is the weekly, and the long, that is the two-day. Folks, that's where we ended up the market on Wednesday the 19th as we go into Thursday the 20th. Hope that you are having a good week, that you're doing lots of practicing, that you're using our daily market worksheet, filling that out every day. Don't forget Got a great training online that you can listen to. You can, of course, find the trainings at our website. You can also find them at our YouTube channel and at iTunes. If you appreciate what we do for you, you, got to, you need to subscribe to our podcast. You can do that by going to the website, chartingwealth.com, signing up for our email newsletter. We'll send you that daily podcast every day the market's open, plus the weekly review and forecast, which you need to know what your weekly trend is. That is such a big determining factor in where things are going to shake out in the long term. Now, when you sign up for our newsletter, guess what you get? You get our How to Read a Stock Chart video, a link to that. You get our daily market worksheet, which is a PDF. You need to print out a lot of copies of that. Fill it out every day as you listen to the podcast. It only takes 10 minutes, my friends. 10 minutes to greatness. Do that on a daily basis before you know it. You will have charting knowledge. And I'm telling you, you can read the charts. You can read the future. Come on. This is worth every, every second of time that you spend dedicated to it. You want to do something nice for us? Go to iTunes. Subscribe to our podcast. Listen to it every day. Give us a five-star rating at iTunes. Also, 
go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to the podcast. That's the first place we upload all of our teachings, all of our trainings, all of our podcasts. And of course, we send them all out to you, the folks that are our email friends. That is go to chartingwealth.com and sign up. Thank you so much. God bless. We love to hear from you. Let us know what else you need, what we can do for you. Keep practicing. God bless from chartingwealth.com.